everyone welcome to another episode of sips with scrubs today it is just me talking to you guys and it's actually a different sort of episode today today we will be um discussing one of my nursing school stories so i'll have a couple of episodes sporadically where i discuss something that happened to me in nursing school or an experience i went through on the floor as a bedside nurse and things of that nature just to have like a little more of a personal touch um, aside from like topical episodes. So that's what I'm giving to you today. We're gonna to be talking about something that happened to me during nursing school. So today I'm going to be sipping on water because I have others coming over later and we will be having drinks then. And if you guys have been watching me, y'all know I'm on my health and fitness journey. So. I'm limiting the alcohol intake as well as a lot of other things. So today we'll be sipping on water and we're going to move along into what would Lainey do? So once again, a lot of these uh, questions are situational or I don't know if they will call it situational scenarios, but um, situational things, I don't know. <laughs> They come from um, a nursing group that I follow on Facebook. So I saw this post and I did want to discuss it. So I'm going to read it to you guys really quick. And then for those on YouTube, you'll be able to see it on the screen along with me. So it begins. Okay, on Nurses Week, I was approached by a staff member who was important. Still don't know his title. He basically said I wasn't charting enough. And if I didn't approve, improve, they would have to let me go. I was upset that I got no warning about this and all of a sudden my job is being threatened during Nurses Week. Mind you, this is May. This is my second assignment here. I've been charting the same way since December of 2021. Nobody has said one word to me about it. I went home and cried about it because I was disappointed. He pulled me aside right by the nurse's station and when I'm thinking he's gonna thank me for traveling to help and happy Nurses Week, he's threatening my job. After this incident, I spoke with staff nurses and asked a couple to show me what they do versus what I do. I mirrored their charting since that's how they do it. Now, today I see this same white dude walk by me and I asked him, did it, everything improve like you wanted? He looked me dead in my face and said, no, it hasn't. You actually had three patients that you did no charting on at all. Are you kidding me? I said, well, I find that hard to believe because I went to your staff and had them overlook my charting ever since that day every day and I have witnesses. As who it was that I didn't chart on and of course he couldn't say. I just want to ask my travel agent to end my assignment at this point. I'm convinced he has something against me. Three patients y'all. Why would I chart on three to six patients each day I work? Four days and just randomly did not decide not to chart on three of them. So what would Lainey do? How would I approach the situation? Like and those sorts of things so for me like you already do an orientation as a travel nurse albeit sometimes it's like a couple of days so within those couple of days the unit that you're on should have told you what is required documentation and that's it really so now that it's like several months after the orientation and i'm still doing what i've was taught to do as required documentation, I don't really see what the point is. I would first start off by trying to figure out who is this person anyway, because like, um, I've never seen you before and now you're talking to me. So like, who are you? So I definitely would have asked like, who, like, who are you? You know, what's your job title? And then, um, what is the required documentation for the unit? I'd explain like, because I'd be trying to be nice. I'm telling y'all the professional way. Okay. <laughs> Inside I'd have had a straight up attitude. That's period. So I just been like, you know, uh, this is a required documentation that I was taught during my orientation. If there's been any changes, please advise me on what documentation is required for this unit or if um, what documentation have I not been fulfilling and can you like, you know, print me out something and things of that nature. 
And, but a lot of this have to do with like, who is this person? Like, are they doing audits? Like, it's not, I can't, I'm imagining it can't be like a charge nurse or a nurse manager because I would assume you've ha you would have already met them before this point. So I'm like, who is this person? And how do you know that I'm not doing this charting? I would have them come with me. Let's go through the charting together sort of thing. And, you know, you could point out to me what I'm missing and what's required. But I definitely would do like some investigation because I'm just like, what am I not doing that I've been doing for six months? You know what I'm saying? I also would um, talk to the nurse manager about it and just be like, hey, you know, this is what's going on in my unit and this is how I felt about it. I don't appreciate, you know, someone approaching me in this manner and I'm unsure of, you know, what's going on at this point. So can you please, you know, let's discuss this so that's kind of what i would do but i'm just like this sounds crazy like not you just randomly coming up to me like mm -mm. i mean girl i'm trying to do my work and here you are like i got stuff to do okay and you interfering and i don't like that about some charting that i've been doing for six months that all of a sudden i'm not doing correctly like it mm -mm. it would have been a little issue but professionally, that's how I would have handled it. But in my head, like that last little bit that I told y'all, that's kind of what my mind would have been going to. Like, um, who are you? <laughs> so that's what Lainey would do. Um, y'all let me know down in the comments if you guys are on YouTube, what would you do in this situation and how would you feel about it? I'm just like, this is kind of astounding to me. Like, you just coming up to me like this. I don't appreciate it. It's not giving. It's very much not giving. All right, guys. So my microphone died. So... We're just going to make it do what it do with the phone audio and hopefully it's not horrible. But um, moving along, we're going to get into my little story time that I wanted to talk to you guys about. It's kind of funny because I just like randomly remembered this. Like every now and then I remember that it happened, but it's kind of like... You know, there's so much stuff that's in your mind as a nurse, I feel like. And then nursing school is pretty much a blur at this point. So it's kind of like only certain things that I remember, like in hindsight about it, like moments that stood out to me. So a lot of times when I do these like story times, when I'm talking about either nursing school or just working as a nurse, a lot of them probably will end up being kind of like negative or dark or crazy just because those are the more memorable days like good days you don't always remember good days because it's just like thank god for a good day and then you go home go to sleep and then something crazy happened and that's what you remember so in no way am i trying to just be like oh this is nursing nursing is all bad that's not the impression i'm trying to give off this is just some of the more memorable things that i remember um throughout my nursing school journey and working as a nurse. So just a little precursor so you guys don't think like, dang, like every day gonna be like this. Like not nah, every day not gonna be like this. Every teacher, as I'm gonna be talking about in this um, story time, is not gonna be like this. This is just my experience and this is some of the stuff that I remember. So without further ado, we're gonna talk about my nursing school story that I'm gonna talk to you guys about today. And it involves a teacher. To put it plainly, me and her got in a little tit for tat sort of situation because I I didn't necessarily pay for my school, but I mean, in hindsight I did because I got the student loans, but I'm just saying like my parents helped pay for a good bulk of it as well. But it don't matter where the money was coming from, I don't play with money and I don't like to waste my money. Like that's just period. That's just one of them things that I do not like to do. I got a lot of things I don't like to do and that's one of them. So with that being said, I'm gonna start at the beginning. So I remember um, in nursing school, you do a mental health class. So I was in that class and this teacher, she, like we were not vibing at all. And you won't get along with all your teachers. And I don't really care if I like you or if I don't like you, but as a teacher-student relationship, I have an expectation of you to teach the topic and the subject matter to the best of your ability and to be able to convey the information in an adequate way. And all of that was not being done. And I'm like, we ain't got to keep keys. I don't got to do nothing. Just give me the material. I need to learn the material. I can take my test. I can go home. Like, I'm cool with that. That's actually what I prefer. And so with this class in particular, like I said, it was mental health. And this uh, teacher, and I don't know if it was like a cultural thing or if it was an age thing. It's probably a combination of both. 
but she was an African, I believe, a professor. And I don't know if you guys are aware or if you guys have, or if you guys are like in my situation, if you've experienced this before, but sometimes like Africans and African-American, I don't really claim to be African-American because I don't know nobody from Africa that's in my family. So I'd say I'm black, right? But I'm black, right? So sometimes there's like a little bit of conflict or how would you say, I don't want to say tension, but sometimes they we don't get along. And I don't know why, like, I don't care, but I know that it's a thing that like Africans look down on black people sometimes because we've lost our culture, which I mean, come, is, is it really our fault? I mean, it's a thing called slavery. What were we supposed to do? But anyway, I know that that's a thing that exists out there. And if you didn't know, now you do know. Like, that's some of the reason why. And then African culture is just, like, completely different. And I'm not going to even get into that because I'm not African. So I don't feel like I can, like, speak on it per se. But I can just tell you from my experience, a lot of the times I do have issues with older African people because they feel like you should be talking to them a certain way because they're an adult or not even adult because I'm an adult too, but they're older than you. So they want a level of respect. And a lot of us black millennials is kind of like, I give everybody a basic level of respect, but I'm not going to give undue respect. And you're not going to speak to me in a way that is belittling, demeaning or any of the things. And you are going to just continue to, to do that because you're older than me. It's just not happening. So a lot of that stuff that I experienced with this professor was those sorts of factors weighing in. So this professor, teacher, she would come to class late all the time, like almost every day. And I already have a problem with that. I hate lateness. Like, that's just a pet peeve for mine. Like, the way I was raised is just like, I'm not going to be late. It's like the whole to be early is to be on time. To be on time is to be late. That's how I was raised. I You get everywhere 10 to 15 minutes earlier. You know what I'm saying? You don't get anywhere, like, on time. And you definitely don't show up late. That's just how I was raised. And then I was on the dance team in high school. And she really enforced that. So now it's kind of instilled to me, like, tardiness. I can't stand it. Now I'm doing a little bit better with my attitude in regards to dealing with late people because y'all just can't get it together is all I can say. But as a professional and we're in a class setting, I expect the teacher to be there before me or at least on time. And it wasn't even that. The whole class will be there and then she'll walk in. I don't even remember how late she'll be. Maybe like 10 to 20 minutes late. And I think one time she was later than that. And I'm just like, well, what the hell is going on? Because you're supposed to be teaching me and you wasted my time. I could have been asleep. Y'all see, that's how I feel about it. So that was my one issue with her. And then my second issue with her is she didn't really even teach. It's kind of like she read the book. And I don't know. And then I, I would ask questions in class because I'm just a curious person. And then with learning things, I kind of have to know a lot of things in its entirety to be able to understand the concept. And from there, I kind of know it forever. And so in this case, I'd ask a question and it seemed like she don't know what the answer is. And I'm like, how you don't know the answer? You the teacher. Like, how you gonna teach me and you don't know what you're teaching about? I'm confused. If I need it, I can pick up a book and read. That's easy. We do that every day. But if I'm asking you questions and it wouldn't just be like one question she didn't know, like it would be like several classes, like somebody have a question or something like that. And she'd be like, oh, well, I don't know. Or she, I'm like, how you don't know? And if like, what, how does this relate to the test? You know what I'm saying? So it's just kind of like questionable with your um, credibility. So it is that. And I think there was something else, but I can't really remember at this time because like I said, this was a while ago. I've been a nurse for four years. So this is like five, six years ago. So I had that issue. And then I think we had our first test and I think I did okay on it, but I could have done better. I think that the stuff that we were learning in class didn't correlate to what was on the test or something. And so I took issue with that. And so I emailed her personally about it. And I think I, I said something of the nature, you know, basically making it seem like I'm concerned about my grades and this is what I've been experiencing in this class. Basically trying to have give her an opportunity to make some changes before I take it higher up because that's exactly what I ended up doing. <laughs> See, um, one thing you're going to learn about being in nursing school and being a nurse, you need to come ready with the receipts, okay? 
So you have to take that step first before you can take it higher up. Because when you take it higher up, they're going to ask, did you talk to the teacher about it? And did they did it, did they do anything to change it? And same thing like within the nursing world. Like say, for instance, you have a problem with your charge nurse, but you just skip to the manager. Like, no, you need to discuss it with the charge nurse first and have some receipts saying that you did so. And this amount of time went by and nothing changed. And this is still the situation. And then you escalate it to the nurse manager. And... I've had to do that on several occasions in my nursing career. So I actually remember another story time. I'm going to have to remember to write that down to tell y'all about this later. But uh, back to this one. So I like talked to her about it. I'm like, okay, like, you know, this was going on. You know, I'm concerned about my grades. Like, and I'm about to, I'm, I don't think I was about to fail this class, but uh-uh, this is mental health. Like, this is not a difficult class. This is not like it's anatomy and physiology or if it's like, um, you know, med surge or pharmacology, this is mental health. Like, it's not that difficult. There's only a handful of medications you can give these people and the diseases are pretty distinct. So there is no way in hell, especially I know like who I am as a person. I know my intellect and I know my capabilities. So ain't no way my grade should be what it is. And I, hi, I'm thinking it's you. You know what I'm saying? And well, even if it's not just solely you, partially it's you and you're not upholding like standards that I've seen from the teachers in other classes. So I take issue with that. So, yep, yeah, I'm a snitch, y'all. Y'all gonna find that out. I'm telling it affects me and my life and my livelihood and me getting my license. Baby, ain't nobody safe. I don't have no loyalty to you. You're not my mama or nobody like that. And you got a job to do. You get paid to do this job. I'm gonna need you to get it together. You feel me? So I... Talked to her already before, and then I ended up talking to the president of the nursing school because the nursing school I went to is very small. So there is not like a lot of people in between to go up to escalate the manor. So I cc the teacher. I forgot who else I cc'd on there because I know it wasn't just the president, but I cc somebody else, and then I cc the president. And I like, I wrote this whole long email. I was looking for it so I could share it with you guys, but I guess I must have deleted it at some point when I cleaned out my emails. But I basically sent her this long email discussing what I've been experiencing in this class and how I feel about it, how concerned I am for my grades. When you are, um, uh, what is it called? Confronting someone regarding a situation, especially when you're not like, I don't want to say the head, but you're in like a lower, mm, what do you call that? Um, I guess you could just say a lower position than the person that you're taking issue with. And even if you're not, it's just good to, um, when you confront people, you have to word it a certain way. So you can make it, you make yourself seem like you the victim. This is what you do. So it's like the I statements, right? I feel concerned about my grades. I'm wondering what I can do to improve them. I discussed this and this and this with the teacher, and this is still what's going on. I don't want this class to prevent me from making this GPA. Stuff like that. I've been doing, I've been excelling in my other classes, and I'm concerned about this one. I talked to the teacher about this, this, and this. See, you got to do it like that. That's how you do it. So I did that. CC the president. We ended up having a meeting, and, you know... You got to be careful though in nursing school too, because then it could kind of put you like in a bad relationship with the teacher. But honestly, I don't really care because all you need to do is do your job. So they might not like you, but I mean, honestly, you can't mess with my grades because then if you do, I can go back to the president and then I could say, ever since we had this conversation, you know, they give you, well, at my nursing school, I heard other, some other nursing schools don't do this, but they share the test with you and then you can go over what you got right and wrong. So you can't say like, oh, this is wrong out of nowhere. Like just give me a felon grade or nothing like that. You can't even do that because I can check that. And even if you did try to do that, you can say like, oh, I feel like this is retaliation for me speaking up for myself and things of that nature. So you gotta be real careful. That's why I say you gotta come with the receipts when it comes to stuff like this because people will try to tear you down after you, you confront them. Even though it's not even your fault, you're just trying to get what you're trying to get out of the situation. And for me, I'm trying to get a good grade in this class and you prevented me from doing that. So, yeah, we had that meeting. And from there, I would say she did improve. I didn't feel like she really had an attitude towards me, but I'm not 
a very sensitive person to begin with so even if she did i probably would just be like you know whatever i'm only here for like three more weeks and i'm never gonna have a class with you again so i don't care um and that kind of was what the situation was i ended up doing okay in the class because i don't remember what grade i was so i know it wasn't terrible <laughs> I got what I needed out of the situation. She started doing better. She started showing up on time. I can't even, I wish I had the details to tell you guys how the classes was going, but I just remember the class was trash. Like there is no point in me waking up and coming to this class and wasting my time with the stuff that she was doing in the class. I can't even remember what it was, but I definitely wanted to share that with you guys because I know a lot of people do take issue with some things that go on in nursing school. And a lot of stuff in nursing school, I don't necessarily agree with how they um, handle certain things and how the program is structured. So I just wanted to share my experience with you guys. Maybe you guys have an experience in nursing school that was kind of similar to mine. Y'all let me know what y'all did below in the comments. Um, and that's pretty much the end of this episode, you guys. Let me know how you like these little story times. I'll probably do more of them because I have a lot, especially as a bedside nurse. Those are the ones I kind of remember a little bit more as though um, nursing school was you know far away so i'll just share what i remember and we can talk about it y'all can talk to me about y'all experiences as well and i'm going to see you guys in my next episode don't forget to like comment and subscribe for my people on youtube and then do what you do over there in the podcast world you guys i'll see you guys next week